just when it seemed like the NBA world was returning to normal, all was well. Kevin Durant reconciled with the Nets, Steve Nash, Sean Marks, Joe Sy. Everybody seems to be at peace with the uh, with the decisions. Trade requests are gone. Just when it seems like everything can go back to normal for a little bit, the NBA reminds us that every day has to be something. Late Wednesday night, Shams, trusty Shams, took to Twitter to drop the bombshell that the Los Angeles Lakers had agreed to trade for Patrick Beverly, giving up uh, Taylor Horton Tucker and Stanley Johnson in the trade to bring in Beverly, who was last seen leading the Timberwolves to the playoffs, uh, celebrating the playing game like it was Game 7 of the Finals, and then being traded to Utah. He had nothing but good things to say about his time in Minnesota. It goes to Utah, where it was pretty clear that uh, they weren't interested in a veteran leadership who wants to help this team get to the playoffs. They're looking probably to just completely blow it up at some point with the Donovan Mitchell trade. And so, enter the Lakers. Voila, here we are. Now, I don't even know if this is, like, I debated, like, was it even worth doing a video? Because, like, I don't think this is the only trade by any means. Like, there's no way the Lakers were like, you know what? We need Pat Bev. That's the last piece of this puzzle. So I don't know, you know, by the time this gets posted in the morning, uh, who knows? There might already be another trade. There might be something else. So this could be incredibly dated incredibly fast, but because it's the Lakers, because it's, you know, it's the team that I root for, I had to. I felt compelled to come on here and just kind of try to sort through some, some thoughts I had, because I'm not a big Papev fan. I think that, uh, like, it's clear what he brings to teams. Um, I can't deny that. I can't deny the heart and the hustle. Um... I'll leave it at that. Can't deny the heart and the hustle and the leadership he gives to teams that need it, that need someone to step in and be that alpha. The problem is he's on a team with LeBron James now, and there's no way he's going to be like, I'm calling the shots now. Like, he could be that mentor in Minnesota. He's not that mentor in L.A., and, like, it got to the point where you saw him getting on Kawhi and Paul George's nerves when they were still together in L.A. on the Clippers. So, I can just imagine what's going to happen if uh, if he tries that. Like, it's going to be it's gonna be interesting. Now, Papev has said that the Lakers need leadership. He has said that if he was on that team, they would easily make the Western Conference Finals. So, we will see about that. But... Two things before I get to the big thing with Pat Bev coming to the Lakers. One, Pat Bev, not much of a shooter. He's a pretty inconsistent outside shooter. He doesn't look for his shot inside the paint either. He's not looking for mid-range. He's going to just put those those black air forces on, and he's going to be a menace on the court for 48 minutes or however long he's playing. He's not scoring. He can facilitate and pass. Uh, he's, you know, smaller guard, so he's not rebounding. He'll, you know, he'll scrap and he'll get in there, but he's not, you know, he's not putting his imprint all over the game unless it's on that defensive end. And he's firing everyone up with some play that's like a hustle play that, you know, fans of the team he's on love and everyone else just kind of gets pissed. Like, on the court, watching in the stands, watching at home, everyone's like, oh, well, here we go again. Here's Pat Bev doing Pat Bev things. Uh, the other issue, before I get to the big issue, is he's older. Like, with this trade, the Lakers gave up basically their last two young assets uh, outside of Austin Reeves and everyone on the G League team uh, or the Summer League team, like Max Christie, Scottie Pippen Jr., all those guys, um, you know, they better be dipping into the, the two-way contracts quick because, you know, getting older is the last thing this team needed. Yes, Pat Bev is an energy guy. Yes, he's a hustle guy. But he's also older than both of the players that they just gave up. So it feels a little weird when, you know, the team was just out of gas last year except for the, the younger players getting minutes for the first time or, you know, having to really show out and make an impression. The age showed. There was a lot of missed games at the top of the roster, and the team struggled, and they missed the playoffs. So, 
feels a little little risky to be like, you know, LeBron missed the most games he's ever missed over the last two years. AD can't stay healthy to the point that now announcers and everyone are calling him street clothes. Carmelo Anthony gone. Like, let's go get Pat Pat. Like, it just feels like such an odd move. And that's why I know it can't be the only move. Because, and this brings me to my biggest point with, uh, with bringing in Pat Bev. That is, Pat Bev and Russell Westbrook do not like each other. This stems all the way back to Russ's time in OKC when Pat Bev was on the Rockets. And there was a play, pretty controversial, uh, pretty clearly a late, dirty, whatever you want to call it, uh, type play where Beverly hip-checked Russell Westbrook in the playoffs leading to a torn ACL, major injury for Russ, and they've had bad blood ever since. Which, I mean, honestly, dirty plays like that, like, what do you expect? Like, of course, there's going to be bad blood. They've been chippy, they've been adversarial, they've been downright, you know, like, hating on each other in different times. Uh, Russ has that famous quote where he said, Papad has you all fooled, he just runs around flailing his arms and screaming. And now they're going to be teammates, maybe. So I hope that they keep this team exactly as is, at least until like training camp, preseason type stuff starts, because I would love to see it just once. Just once. I just want to see Russ and Pat Bev on the court at the same time, because both not very good outside shooters. Uh, both questionable decision makers when it comes to their shot selection and neither really like doing a lot off the ball on offense so running a backcourt out of the two of them just doesn't make sense from a logistics standpoint granted yes LeBron is going to be the one or you're or who knows maybe they run the offense through AD when he's healthy but either way like It's just, it's so, it's such an interesting thought to just sit here and imagine what that team would look like with, with Russ and Patrick Beverly in the backcourt. I, so I would love to see it, but I don't think it's happening. I think those two do not like each other at all. This honestly probably feels like a Russ to Indiana for Miles Turner, Buddy Heald, uh, the Lakers throwing in those two first round picks, um, which... Basically would be the end of uh, the youth in L.A. and the, the thought of potential in L.A. for a few years. Um, outside of Austin Reeves. <laughs> Unless Austin Reeves can't hit catch-and-shoot threes, in which case he will probably be gone by February too. Because when LeBron signed his extension last week, that kind of sealed... I, I think I even said it in the video I did about that. Like That kind of seals the fate for for the roster and for what the team is going to be while he is under contract. This is going to be a team built to LeBron's strengths and built around LeBron's wishes. So they signed all these clutch guys in the offseason. They just traded for Patrick Beverly, gave up the last two young players basically that they had um, on the last roster. And now we kind of just wait and see what happens with Russ. I mean, I would assume it's probably going to be that Indiana trade. I know there was all that talk about uh, the Hornets being interested because Russ is a Jordan brand athlete and Gordon Hayward's unhappy. Maybe, you know, the Hornets want to do something to kind of retool on the fly after all of the offseason trouble that they've had. So who knows? Maybe it's a Gordon Hayward contract dump, PJ Washington or something. Like, I don't know. But... Honestly, too, probably going to wake up and find that they traded him for, like, Harrison Barnes or someone. And I'll be like, cool. Sounds great. Love it. Um, On the flip side, I'm sad to see Taylor Horton Tucker and Stanley Johnson go. Stanley Johnson was probably the Lakers, like, best player from a, like, hustle and energy standpoint all year. Like, that dude gave it his all every time he was on the court. And a lot of the time, the older players just didn't have that gear. So you would see him, like sprinting for rebounds, battling for loose balls, you know, just trying to make stuff happen. And it's all it takes. All you want to see is your your team play hard and give a damn in those games. Uh, And he definitely did, so it's sad. And for Taylor Horton Tucker, I can't believe this is where we're at because that dude was in, like, every trade two years ago. He was, like, the young, hot player 
to put in trades like that the Lakers could use to go get a superstar, like go get a disgruntled star. I looked it up really quick, and there were some some <laughs> trade suggestions involving Taylor Horton Tucker on places like Sports Illustrated that were talking about like Taylor Horton Tucker for Jeremy Grant for Robert Covington, for, like so. It's, it's crazy to see how far his value fell, how fast. And I don't know if that's, like, an indictment on the Lakers' development or if it's, you know, just the, you know, the, the cost of playing with LeBron. But I, I can only imagine now that he's moved on. If he, if he stays in Utah and they, they keep going with this younger movement, I can only imagine he's going to blossom... Like, basically every other former Laker has since they left this team. So, who knows? It could be a combination of it. I kind of think it might be development because this has been happening since before LeBron got there. So, who knows? Um, and like I said, I don't think this is it. So, we'll see what else happens. But I just wanted to share some thoughts on this one. Papev to the Lakers. It's wild. Not necessarily a fan. I understand it comes with the territory. You have LeBron. You have to make these moves to try to, you know, perceive up your team's chances at winning it all. But I like having young teams to root for, man. I like I like watching young players grow and develop and I, I love the homegrown roster story. It's it's why I think Cleveland is so fun to watch. It's why Memphis is so good. It's why Golden State, other than those Durant years, stayed so popular, like People just like to see and root for the homegrown teams. So, it's a shame. It's not surprising, though. It is to be expected. Uh, Lakers fans, in the comments, please let me know your thoughts on this or what you think this move might be leading to. Uh, as far as other trades, opinions, anything like that, let me know. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the day.